can't be traveling with you everywhere. Hey, I was shattered. I felt like my heart was broken. I cried. I cried. It's like, why? Why don't you want to travel with me everywhere? I thought we're in love. I thought it's me and you against the world. Me and you for life. Why would you say you don't want to travel? Am I a burden to you? Hey guys, welcome to Little Black Bird 91. This is part three of our series, Breaking Down Woody Meyer and Miss Trudy. Listen, I'm your favorite dating and relationship coach, and I'm here to give you guys some gems today. We're talking to you today about anxious attachment versus fearful avoidance. But this time around, we're talking about Miss Trudy and what I believe is contributing towards the downfall of this particular relationship. And when I mean downfall, what I really mean is we've seen some behaviors of this relationship that don't seem to be very beneficial uh, for the marriage. And her coming out, and I believe oversharing some stuff about the relationship, is an indication that a whisper is going to become a very loud sound very, very soon if we don't nip it in the bud. So we're going to break it down from her perspective and say what I believe she needs to start doing and actually begin to give a balanced equation. Whenever a relationship doesn't work or a relationship is faltering, there are two people involved. And we must begin to look at both sides to balance the scale and the equation. Oftentimes, there are two people doing two different things that are actually contributing towards uh, uh, the, the, the benefit of the relationship, good or bad. And so I'm breaking it down from an angle of anxious versus fearful avoidance. That simply means this. Attachment styles are something that was um, formulated by John Bowlby and a, a British uh, psychologist who talks about the way that children attach themselves to the, uh, to the caregiver or the parent, right? And when they become adults, they then begin to replicate those attachment styles in the relationship. I believe Miss Trudy is an anxious attaching uh, individual. What that means is this. Anxious people need a lot of reassurance and validation. OK, it's an insecure attachment style which requires validation and reassurance. And they gain that from external sources, i.e. relationships with other people. OK, their fear is of being rejected, abandoned and betrayed. OK, and it leads them oftentimes to be people pleasers, codependent and, and begin to enmesh. Enmeshment means when you have no good boundaries and you don't know where you begin and where you end. OK, and the reason why we get the the uh, the the insecure attachment style um, of anx anxiousness is because there is an inconsistent parenting of the emotional needs of that child. We know that Miss Trudy, her, her father was in her life, but her mother was not necessarily there for her the way she needed her to be. And, and that maybe has contributed towards the anxious attachment style. OK, and so what it leads to is a child will yearn and try to earn the affections, attention and acknowledgement of people in order to feel validated and reassured in their own entire life. Oftentimes you see anxious people People actually clinging on to people. And if you're somebody who's been in relationships and you find yourself with people that are seemingly emotionally unavailable, i.e. oftentimes dismissive avoidant people or fearful avoidant people, let's just call them avoidance, um, you will find that it's because most times you carry oftentimes an anxious spirit. And the reason why is because anxious people tend to fill in the gaps when there is a gap. Right. Like, for instance, if there's if if there was a uh, if there was a song and you couldn't remember the lyric, an anxious person would fill in the lyric, even if it's wrong, simply so because they would feel uncomfortable with the gap. Another example of an anxious person would be sitting in silence and the anxious per person having to speak because they're afraid of the silence and what it would mean. They can't just let it be. Because anxious people can't just be because they're always moving, working and trying to earn the affection of people and the validation of others from external sources. I believe this is where Miss Trudy is at. OK. All right. Then we must talk about Woody Meyer, which I'm not going to talk too much about because I've done the first two videos. I've broken his particular part down I, again. But fearful of when I believe that Woody Meyer is because of the way he was testing our good sis, Miss Trudy, um, in... Uh, 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 in, um, in a particular video, he was talking about how he tested her to, you know, make her annoyed and frustrated or because he wanted to make sure that, you know, uh, that she, you know, make sure she liked him the way he liked him. And this is actually a typical example of a fearful avoidance. We'll play a little bit of a clip. If you haven't seen it already, let's go. Just to spice the relationship out. Yeah. Yeah, just fight a little bit. What, what, what kind of cr trouble do you cause? Sometimes he just... He just... Go ahead. Don't say it. Say it, feel free. Sometimes there's nothing. It's just angry for the face. And I'm like, what's going on? It's just angry. Yeah, sometimes I just feel like, why, why, why are you smiling a lot? You know? <laughs> you be, you be. 
All right. So if you watch the rest of the clip, he also talks about how, you know, why he's smiling a lot. And the reason why is because he feels like you've been smiling too much and too peaceful. It doesn't work for him. Right. That you're that peaceful for him. It's like you shouldn't be that at, at, that at peace. He's testing her. Right. And people do that when they're not so comfortable and they're insecure about themselves. Because, again, with a fearful avoidant for them, they they oscillate, which means jump between um, anxious and avoidant perspectives. Right. Which means they crave love. But at the same time, they reject it when the love comes they're afraid of you seeing them for who they really are and so when they become vulnerable right in the commitment they're afraid of being seen and you actually seen them the reality of the situation is at the beginning of any dating phase fearful avoidance just how anxious people are really great it's when commitment comes in it's when they feel like they have to commit and they have to be um they have to be uh, stagnated now in the relationship or we're moving towards that, that you start to see the cracks in the armor and the chink. And so with uh, uh, fearful avoidance, they are afraid of rejection and they're afraid of uh, people seeing that they are not worthy of love in a sense, right? They, they feel like they're not worthy of love and they feel like they're bad people. They feel like at the core of it, they are evil almost in a sense or they're bad they're not good, right? Um, and so they their thing is they, they don't, they're afraid of abandonment betrayal, rejection. Um, and because of that, they will seek to uh, uh, cover up their vulnerability. And that can end up being in the case of deactivating, meaning they do what avoidance do, right? They end up pushing you away or testing you or, you know, um, withholding their affections from you because they're afraid of allowing you to get too close because once you get too once you make them too vulnerable they're exposed and if you're exposed you'll really see them for who they actually are and they don't like that they're scared they think that they they think they're real them they can't be loved for and the reason being is because where they grew up they grew up in a household of chaos they grew up in a household of chaos abuse um uh, uh an angry parent uh a parent that was um I was very heavy on one particular emotion and then flipped it very quickly. So an unstable parent could be mental health. Um, and, and that child was never sure how that parent would come. Another thing is alcoholic or drug, drug filled parents as well. Right. The, the parents that would be, you know, not sure what they were going to get each day because it was like a slot machine. The child didn't know how to regulate itself because it never knew what it was going to get. Now this is really important. Okay. All right. It's very, very important because the fearful of what it needs space and time. And this is where we're going to break down Miss Trudy um, and come to her again, because I want to break down some stuff for you guys. And hopefully you'll understand this. So if you, if you've understood or you're not, you're new to this, hopefully I've given you guys a little bit of a breakdown so you can understand where we're coming from. Why do I believe Miss Trudy is a problem in this relationship? It's because I think she's too silent. Anxious people tend to try to take on, conform to the identity of the other individual, meaning they will take on your ideologies, your thoughts, and your processes. Now, this is really important because what ends up happening is they abandon their own needs and their own wants. Oh, who's calling me? Because this is not the time to call me. This is not the time to call me, please. And so they will abandon their own, uh, they will abandon their own needs, right? In a situation. And so what ends up happening um, is what ends up happening is that as they abandon their own needs, right, they forget and then they start taking on your wants, your needs, and your problems, and they start identifying with you. Now, why is this a problem? Because when it comes to any avoidant, dismissive or fearful, which I think our brother Wooden Might is fearful, this is gonna feel like he's being trapped. Now, this is really important. Because this conversation now will only look like what am I as a problem. No, no, no. It takes two to tango. The anxious person has an ability to be a little bit clingy. Okay? Let's just play a little bit of a clip. I'm going to show you a little bit of a clip here. Right? Let's play this clip. And you need to chase your dreams. That's my goal. But it took me so long to accept that. Or to see it like that. I just wanted to go with my everywhere. And when we travel together, sometimes I'm a lady. So it may take a little longer to get ready. Man doesn't joke with his time. So I'd, he'd have to wait for me. Sometimes we'd have to argue about time. Or sometimes... We go to do content. He wants to do something. I want to do something else. He has to wait for me. Or sometimes you should. Okay, pause it right there. Now, it may seem simple. Like, oh, like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal to anybody who's an avoidant. What she just said and what she explained is this. That for her, like, for instance, when they're doing work or whatever, right? He will have to wait for her. Or she would have to get ready. Or, you know what? He wants to shoot something, but he can't have the autonomy. And this is a real word. Avoidance need autonomy. There is nothing wrong with autonomy, but it's very difficult because if you don't communicate in a relationship very well, you will destroy relationships. But avoidance need autonomy. They're never going to not need it. Okay. Avoidance need autonomy. And because they need autonomy, what ends up happening is that in the relationship, 
right? When they feel like somebody's encroaching on their particular uh, turf and they're doing too much, being i.e. clingy, which anxious people can be very clingy because remember their whole identity gets lost. They forget that they are an individual person and they cling to you and make their identity yours, what can end up happening, codependent and enmeshment, what can end up happening is that their, their avoidant person gets triggered and says, whoa, you are doing too much. You're, 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 you need to have your own independence. One of the biggest pitfalls for any avoidant is that you don't have your independence because the avoidant grew up in a household where they had to self-soothe, probably had to protect themselves, had to earn their own money, had to you know, uh, learn how to um, deal with their own emotions. They became a parent to themselves before they were even a parent, meaning they had to grow up really, really quickly. And because they had to grow up really, really quickly, unfortunately, in that space, right? There was no one there who was covering them and parenting them emotionally. And so what happens is they look at other people who can't parent themselves as weak. Because why can't you look after yourself? Because I had to. So what do you want me? Do you notice? And then I'll play a clip for uh, the Woody Meyer situation. This is why I said that it takes two to tango. It may look like he's a bad guy. That wasn't what I was saying. I was actually saying that actually there's more to the story, that there's two sides to the situation. I don't like the testing, but there's two sides. So let's just play a little bit of a clip. I want to see if I can get the right clip for you guys. Okay. Stay in the game for today. No. You're, if you call us even in midnight time, we'll show up. I'll be calling up midnight tonight. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, women. Yes. On you all mm, the time. Then mm, why are you the man? Mm. Because at the end of the day, you should be able to empower your woman. You see, you can ask 10 women, like, what do you bring on the table? And they mm. will tell you sex. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. What do you bring on the table? Like, we moved to a new house. And when... Uh, independent totally, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that as a man, if you always you know, hello, hello. Uh, hello, hello, guys. women generally should get to the point where they don't depend on any man for any support. What what is your policy? I'm not, I'm not saying women should be independent uh, independent totally, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying that as a man, if you always allow your woman to be dependent on you all mm -hmm. the time, then mm -hmm. why are you the man? Mm -hmm. Now, pause it right there. That's why I said that there's a problem with this, right? Because actually where this is coming from is that the avoidant struggles with people relying on them. They don't like that, right? They don't like that at all. They don't like people having to, their whole life dependent on them. Here's why. Because the biggest fear of an avoidant is that they're going to disappoint somebody. Because their whole life, what they've experienced is disappointment. And because they felt disappointment from people, they, they don't want to put themselves in a position where they can disappoint somebody, right? They've experienced rejection from their youth and they've been shamed for their emotions and their thoughts. So what ends up happening is, right, they feel a sense of shame and embarrassment when they have to rely on other people because they've been taught that they're ashamed. They are shameful for when they relied on their caregiver. So what ends up happening is that they look at other parties and say, you should also be independent. Now, when you've got an anxious person, remember, they over rely on other people to validate and reassure them. They over rely. I want to I focus on that word, over rely. Don't play it. And if, if we look at it only as Woody Meyer, we're going to miss it. They over rely and they need a sense of autonomy and identity for themselves, but they tend to take on the identity of other people. That is going to be the biggest trigger for somebody who's an avoidant, whether they're fearful or dismissive. They don't like that because what it feels like is that you're trapping me. And what you're saying is, I don't know when I'm going to be free from the clutches of you. When I say free, what that means is not that he wants to cheat, but rather you should be able to live your own life as well and do what you're supposed to do. That's how they see things. Right. So when he's saying about a woman being independent, I think that's where it's coming from. It's that trauma of coming from that background. And so when you've got somebody who's anxious, like Trudy, I'm going to go back again. One of the things is clinginess is, a, is an issue. Right. Their identity gets based on other people. They lack autonomy. OK. They want to be in your they want to they want to feel like they're in your skin. That's how anxious people are. They, they, if they know, they'll, they'll comment down below. They want to feel like they're in your skin to make them feel like they're close to you. OK. They forget their own life. OK, and, and start living yours. They want to fill in the blanks and read your mind. One thing that anxious people do is that they don't they start reading people's minds. And what they're really reading is it's called hypervigilance. They're not reading anybody's mind. It's hypervigilance. And what ends up happening and fearful avoidance do this, too, because they've got both the anxious and also the uh, 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 av av um, avoidance side. Right. And so what ends up happening when it comes to things like reading people's minds, you're not reading their minds. You're hypervigilant on their micro uh, micro expressions. You're hypervigilant on tone, language, body language. Um, you're hypervigilant on uh, what else? 
the words a person uses or whatever, and whatever they say, right? So what ends up happening is because of that hypervigilance, it's almost as if you're reading their mind and knowing what they want before time, but it's just an over, uh, you're, you're over focusing on certain things in order to stop and prevent the feeling of abandonment, rejection, and betrayal, okay? All right. So the one thing that um, uh, that anxious people will end up doing is they want to earn their love. OK, I'm going to go back to our other video. I'm going to show you this clip because they want to earn the love. I want you to listen to this clip again. Um, let me see if I can get it. Twenty one. OK, let's go. Hopefully. I don't know. I'm, I'm just the kind of lady who's been brought up to not depend on men, you know, just work hard for your own. Because I've been told that when you depend on men, they're going to start looking down on you, you know. When you have to borrow men everything, then they start looking down on you. And I don't want to be looked down upon. So I work so hard to have my own things. If I want to fly, if I want to get myself something, I just have my own money. You get? Oh, yeah. yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay. So I know you probably should have played a little bit further back. So if, if you listen to this part, and if you listen to the other video where she talks about being independent, right? And in fact, I can play that other clip as well. Um, where Miss Trudy talks about it, actually. And I said that I wasn't sure why she's taken on the thought process because she wasn't agreeing with him. Let's just play you a lot. And basically that he's part of the reason that you are... She showed me that nothing is impossible. And even when, you know, just to add on to what he was saying, I, I usually feel so bad uh, when I, I meet men whose women expect them to pay everything. Mm. And like, that's so unfair. Especially if your man is hustling. Mm. Well, where, where should he how do you expect him to pay for everything sure mm, mm. you're all hustling you're all human beings you know and most of now why did i play this clip i played this clip because when we actually broke it down in part two go and watch that it's a bit longer the first 15 minutes is where i break it down when we break down this video right and we watch the earlier part where she speak where he asks would admire about why he doesn't want to necessarily quote unquote pay for his girlfriend right um she ends she doesn't she doesn't show a positive body language to what he's saying right? She doesn't nod her head. She doesn't look in, like she's agreeing with what he's saying. Then suddenly she comes out later on talking about how she agrees with him. And it's like, there's a contrast between the behaviors. And there's a reason why. It's because, again, with anxious people, what ends up happening is they're trying to earn the love. So they will do whatever they need to do. They'll people please. Okay? They will people please. They look to, they look to try and earn the affection and the validation. So if that means changing who they are to make sure they fit around you, they'll do it they'll do it right okay they'll do it and so another thing of aspect of them is that their fear of abandonment and betrayal which we saw in uh the video with uh in her interview which will play is it okay with it? they trust my husband he trusts me i'm not gonna cheat on my husband he's not gonna cheat on me although initially i used to be so scared oh, i used to be so scared i used to cry oh my god i used to cry so much because when he travels a lot people would send me videos now, it's not just the videos. She was already scared before this point. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. She was already scared before this point, more than likely. But that fear of abandonment and betrayal is very large there, as you just heard, right? That fear of abandonment and betrayal. And so what ends up happening is the anxious person will cling onto someone. And that's probably why it pushed him to be like, I just need space. You're doing too much. Because more than likely, her behaviors were probably going to be end up probably being clingy, right? Now, so before, obviously, you know, you get to that point, we have to understand that these are these particular problems, okay, are going to cause the avoidant person to want to shut down. It's going to cause the avoidant person to want to push you away and reject you. It's going to want them to, it's going to, it's going to force them to say, to, sorry, it's going to force them to deactivate from you. So withhold affection, um, not tell you they love you, um, not want to be around you, avoiding you literally physically, you know, um, not being emotionally present in that immediate moment or being unavailable emotionally. Um, whether it's they start flirting with other people, what they're trying to do is disengage you because they feel like you're too close. Now, does that mean that, does it mean that he needs to work on that? Yes. And so does she. Because we can't have a clingy person and we can't have somebody who wants to run away. We need, we need to have, have a balance between the two, okay? He's going to feel like he's being trapped. He's going to feel like he's being micromanaged. He's going to feel like he has another mother. And that's one thing that anxious, uh, avoidant people do not like. They don't want another mother, okay? They don't want you all, of, all up on them, all over them, all touching. And you know what's so funny? I was watching a video. And I thought to myself, and I haven't got the clip of it, I would have got it. And she was trying to touch him in the in the airport. She was trying to touch him and he was like moving her hand away. I was like, why is he moving her hand away? And I realized I saw the exact same thing with Megan Good and I saw this with Devon Franklin. It's like when, when avoidance feel like you're too close, everything becomes too close, including your physical touch, right? I don't know if I can get the clip for that for you guys uh, as well. 
Um, yes, I think I, if I can find a clip for you guys, I will find it um, as well. Um, let me see if I can get the clip for you guys and see if I can get it in the meantime. Well, yeah, let me see. Like being out there, people see me like, oh, Maya. And it's like this guy who doesn't know how to protest you. <laughs> so this is like, you know, I've, 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 I've come, come a long way. way. This airport, anytime I come here, I just remember. Coming now. You never told me, you're always in this airport. Ah, just today, I just felt like trying to so open up your heart. Whatever One. Touch, today, I hope it's touching me so you can Two. open up your heart more. Because this is a safe space. Exactly, exactly. So this place got a lot of memories. Three. Memories. I come here. I remember I had a dick in her camera which was for somebody so, when I was... so three times he actually pushed her hand away now why am i why am i showing you this because again the way that avoidance behave when they feel like their space has been invaded emotionally even physically they want to reject you this is why i'm saying that there needs to be an actual communication and i'll talk about solutions in another video because of actual solutions we have to go through right but what we're seeing right now okay may seem like it's very very cruel what's happening is a, it He's literally trying to create distance between the two of them because he feels overwhelmed by the, the clinginess or the anxiety of the other party, right? And so what ends up happening is sometimes when, when people haven't worked on their avoidance side, this becomes too much because you're, 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 get, you're beginning to tread into my individual space and I need my space. As, a, as an avoidant person, I need my autonomy and I need my space, right? And so you saw her, him move her hand and then she, he actually does it one more time. Let me show you. Uh, where again, this is last time here as well, right? It's the last time. Watch this. Yeah, because both my and I have baby faces. So, especially back then, we looked way younger. Oh my God, this can, you know, can, you, can you guys believe that when I'm with you, they ask you. Look at, look at, look what happens to her face. He literally, he, he, he didn't pay attention. He didn't pay. I, I'm, I just want to show you. Watch. He's way younger. Oh my God, this can you, know, can, can, you, can you guys believe that when I'm with you? Look where her eye went to. He, it went to wherever she moved. He was too forceful. He doesn't realize. So he just needs to pay attention, right? Because when avoidance, when avoidance are deactivating and they are trying to create space, they don't realize they're doing it sometimes. You know what I'm saying to you? So what I'm saying to you at the moment is this, that what needs to happen now is a really honest, radical conversation. It's called radical honesty. And what that means is we need to come to the table and have a real conversation about how we actually feel. Here's what needs to be said. On his side, he needs to be honest and vulnerable first and foremost with himself about the emotions and the feelings that he does dismiss within himself. I, I, you know, I, I do this thing with my clients and I obviously have clients that I work with. If you are looking for a coach as well, then please, by all means, use the description box below. Um, I haven't got space as much right now. I'm fully booked until November, but I do have emergency slots. It's a bit expensive. I ain't going to lie to you. In fact, it's not expensive. Your healing, your growth, and your and your uh, transformation, what's it worth to you? I shouldn't even say it's expensive anymore, but it's more than you would pay if you were on the original list. But you can queue jump. So by all means, please uh, get yourself on that list if you want to go and get the healing you want in 2024 as well, okay? But look, going back to my point again of what I was saying is that he needs to be radically honest with himself and face himself in the mirror and be vulnerable and say, what feelings am I feeling? What emotions am I feeling? How do I feel when Trudy is intruding on my personal turf and my own individual autonomy? He needs to be honest about that. That's why they had that conversation about you can't fly everywhere with me. And he ended up hurting her and actually hurting her feelings more rather than her understanding the reason why. The true understanding, understanding of why he wants to go alone, not because he wants to cheat, I don't think. I think the reality is he wants a space because you're in my space all the time. But he needs to communicate that in a way that lets her know, no, I love you. I care. I care about you. I'm, I, I, I want you. I just want you to know that I also need a bit more. I need a bit of space just to be able to just to be able to do what I do. Because it feels like you're encroaching my space a little bit. That's all, right? And then what they need to do is, and, and then what he needs to also do is, um, he needs to also work on uh, allow himself to be regulated. Meaning he needs to start looking at what emotions and feelings are coming up when he's interacting with Trudy. Because if you just react without being conscious and you react out of your subconscious, you're going to say or do something like this where you're swiping her hand away consistently and the person's going to read it as you don't want them. And you're rejecting me. Now, what we need from Trudy is we need her to work on her individual identity. Be an individual. Your individualism cannot be based upon him, which is why she decided to develop that. And she's now learning that as well. Right. She needs to learn how to hold boundaries and that her boundaries should not begin to emesh with uh, 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 what he Maya, because if you do that, he's going to feel like you're trapping him and he has no room to breathe. It's like he's being suffocated. So he doesn't want he doesn't, he's not going to like that.
right? So we need to learn how to hold boundaries where we begin and where we end and then begin to talk about that, right? What are your wants and what are your needs? Okay, you need to be able to clearly express that. Do not be doing mind reading. Don't try to anticipate, state it. Be very clear about what it is that you actually desire and what you want from situations. Okay, third thing is this. She needs to develop a voice. And we develop a voice when we develop boundaries, but also when we, when we realize our voice is important. Okay, anxious people believe their voice is not important. Fearful avoidance too, do the same thing. And dismissive people do the same thing. It's why they're, they're an insecure attachment. So because they do this, what ends up happening is that they don't speak up and they end up becoming passive aggressive in their movements, right? So like we saw with Trudy, I think she was being oversharing. I thought it was a passive aggressive move because I think she's been hurting for a little while and she decided to share too much. Now, what ends up happening is when you don't communicate that with your partner or where you feel afraid to, or you feel like I'm not going to be heard, my needs are not going to be met, um, it's too scary to be vulnerable, would they even listen to me? When you start having those thoughts, you are going to do passive aggressive means. We need to be assertive in our communication, which means being able to describe what's actually happening to us and being conscious about what's happening to us. And then being able to explain that to somebody else to also bring them into an understanding of where we are at in the relationship too. Oh, let me give you an example. So you're maybe you're maybe like, for instance, he felt like she was too close. What she needs to explain is, listen, baby, I love spending time with you. I love spending time with you and I love flying with you. I want to continue flying with you right? I want to continue flying with you. When you told me that we can't fly together no more, it broke me, right? I felt hurt. I felt that I felt hurt. And I felt like you didn't care about me anymore, right? In future, I would love to go on holidays with you. Now she can say that and he doesn't have to agree. He can, he can then reply and say, babe, listen, I love going on holidays with you too. You know, I, I love our time we spend together. Okay. All right. The reason why I said about not flying all the time was because I felt like I was being um, I felt claustrophobic. I felt like I was being trapped in in that in 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 the, in the relationship, and I wanted a bit more space to be able to be autonomous in the relationship, right? And it's not like I don't want to spend time with you. I want to be autonomous, right? So you know, in future, what I can do is that I can let's negotiate about the, how many times we go on a holiday together during the course of the year, right? Solution. But whilst at the same time stating and let her know, it's not because he doesn't like he doesn't like her or doesn't love her. It's simply because that's how he felt. It's got nothing to do with you. It's to do with me. And so we have to do that. What is called BEC, behavior explanation change. BEC, behavior explanation change. And you top it off with a, a compliment at the beginning. I love when you do this, or I like when you do this, or I love when you do that. You add always a compliment at the beginning before you begin to dissect what you want to see changed. OK, there needs to be a conversation about negotiation, about how they're going to discuss, about how they're going to negotiate their time they want to spend together. Also, there should be a code of ethics in terms of, number one, how do we argue? What are the rules of engagement? What can we and can't we say in a, in an, in a, in a, in a fight or in an argument? You know what I'm saying to you? There should be a code of ethics in terms of behavior. Let me give you one of the code of ethics. As somebody who obviously is counseling people, right? Um, you know, let's say, for instance... Uh, let's say I was let's say I was coaching somebody in person. Okay, me personally, I don't want to. If I'm a, if I'm married now, yeah, um, or yeah, if I'm if, yeah, if I'm married now, I don't really like having the door closed and physically. I was like, let's leave the door open. No one's gonna hear you. No one's gonna no one's gonna get in your business. But let's leave that door open. I like to have that transparency because I don't want no trouble. Yeah. I don't want that trouble. That's for me, a code of work of ethics, just for me. Or for instance, um, the Bible says, abstain from all appearances of evil. If I'm in a relationship, I don't want anyone to even have a, I don't even want to even sniff there's an idea of trouble. Do you get what I'm saying to you? I'm not going to give you that. So I'm not going to be in places that you don't know I'm not going to be in. So I'm either going to let you know ahead of time I'm in this place, or I won't be in that place alone with somebody who's of the opposite sex who you don't know. Right. And even then, I'm, I'm a bit weary. You have to be very careful. My code of ethics. Why? Because it, it's a, a way of assuring you and reassuring you that I am somebody who's committed to protecting my relationship with you and your uh, and our relationship. I don't want anyone to speak bad that could now cause an issue where when she started saying that people are sending her stuff. Right. Do you know why she started feeling that way? It's because it wasn't the relationship wasn't protected. OK. Um, let me see what it said. Uh, I want to see the part where he said uh, that she said she sent him that they that people were sending her stuff. 
I'm trying to think of the clip where if I can get it for you guys. I'm going to get a clip for you. I used to cry. Oh my God, I used to cry so much because when he travels alone, people would send me videos. Ooh, have you seen my this girl? And he'd be doing nothing. He just met someone for content creation and they shoot videos. But guys would be like, ooh, did you see how the girl touched her? Oh my God. I would, I would, my, oh, I would cry. And um, I would call him. And people did not know this, but I, I think we almost ended our relationship so many times. So you see that, that, that there's, there's, there's areas of where your your good can be spoken of badly you know so i've started to learn myself that if i'm in a relationship i'm not about to give you that time and space do you know what i'm saying to you yeah look if you see me <laughs> i remember uh, if you see me take photos of people that have got partners yeah that i know i the way i the way i even conduct myself in a photo i don't even want i don't i don't even want you to even sniff and think to myself D -d 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 -d. no 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 you know what I'm saying to you? I do a lot of things out of my way. And someone might say, you're doing too much. It's like, no, I never want my good to be spoken of evilly. You understand to you? I don't even, I don't even want even to give a sniff. There's even anything going on. You know what I'm saying to you, right? I don't need to be going dinners and stuff like this. Unless it's a business meeting, of course. But even then, I want to make it very clear that my partner should know all of this, what's happening ahead of time. It should not be that I'm, I'm going on random dinners and random moments or random filming with people. No, no, my partner should be well aware before I even get to say. So that when someone does say something, my partner can go, no, I already knew. He told me he was going to be out here at this time. And I know he's filming his content for this amount of time. He's been texting me and calling me and telling me. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying to you? We need to have a code of ethics about how we apply boundaries so that people can't speak badly about your relationship. That's just what I feel at the moment. I feel like Miss Trudy just needs to have a voice. She needs to start stating what her wants and needs are and actually start and start being assertive with that communication so that he knows because he may not realize that his avoidant behavior is causing gaps in the relationship. For him, he's just taking the space because he needs it. But she needs to let him know the application and the meaning of him taking space. I hope you guys have liked, shared, subscribed, clicked on that bell button for notification of uploads. We appreciate you guys. Still up, so don't forget as well, we are doing coaching. If you need some coaching, reach out to me um, and we'll be happy to see you as well. Much love, much appreciation. We'll see you again.